and we start conversation at 5 a.m. You won't believe it. Uh, Lagos uh, doesn't sleep. Nigeria uh, likes to talk a lot. Uh, we appreciate you for that. And that's why we have said, look, whether it's 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. or whatever time, we'll bring conversation very close to you. And you can have your say on any topic or issue. This morning on the Crossfire, we, because it's Thursday and we do Health Thursday on the morning Crossfire, so we have a conversation on childhood epilepsy uh, on the show today. I have a very uh, important personality, an expert in this field. He's a consultant pediatrician, Dr. Ayodele uh, Reina, joins me live in the studio this morning. Okay, Ayodele, good morning to you. Good morning, Sheriff. Good morning, Lagos. Good morning, Nigeria. <laughs> It's good to have you here. Thank you so much. Uh, when you said important personality, I was looking around. Say, ah, ah, <laughs> ah, is Uncle Jimmy in the building? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dele, you have come again. <laughs> Don't bring Instagram here. Right? <laughs> it's good to have you here. Thank you so much. Uh, for those uh, who are listening, if you'd like to join the conversation, if you have any question concerning epilepsy in children, uh, feel free to um, stay tuned and because we'll be taking your thoughts in a moment. We're live on Facebook, Nigeria Info 99.3. And we're also live on YouTube, Nigeria Info 99.3. You can let us know what you think and your question on Twitter at Nigeria Info FM on Twitter. Uh, WhatsApp number is also very available for you to uh, drop your thoughts. The WhatsApp number is 0809-597-5805. I'll take that slowly now. Uh, that our WhatsApp number is 0809 Five nine seven five eight zero oh, five. I'll release the phone numbers in a moment when we're ready to go to the telephone. So epilepsy exists when someone has a seizure and their brain demonstrates a pathologic and enduring tendency to have recurrent seizures. The disease carries a great social stigma which leads to harmful uh, discriminatory practices based on various misconceptions associated with the disease. Why do we hide this particular disease? I will try, myself and Dr. Aridele Reina, will try and uh, bring some perspective to this in a moment. They are already, already calling us, I know. People will have loads of questions. But Dr. Aridele, let, let's begin with um, this particular one that bothers me personally. Mm. Why do children, let's say babies, why mm. do they have epilepsy? Okay, so thank you very much for that introduction, Sheriff. Um, you've given a quite an, an important um, definition, quite a concise definition of what epilepsy is. So essentially, epilepsy is when an individual has the tendency to have convulsions or seizures, as you've called them. And convulsions are, of course, you know, the one that we see most commonly or the one that is very familiar to everyone are the convulsions where the whole body begins to jerk yeah. and then the person has their eyes rolled up to the back of their heads. And that results from an abnormal brain activity. Normally, the brain passes electrical signals into our muscles to tell them to move in a coordinated fashion. But by the time these signals become a little bit haywire, such that they are not firing at the same rate or they are overfiring, then those fine signals that say move in a coordinated manner become you know, disorganized. Mm -hmm. And so the muscles now move violently and in an uncoordinated fashion, and that results in what we see. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's quite alarming for anyone to witness. So why children? I think the answer to that question is that the brain of children are still developing. Okay. Their brains are still developing, and so they are in a phase where they are quite vulnerable mm -hmm. to a lot of influences like drugs, like um, low oxygen, like infections like meningitis or cerebral abscesses. So all these factors, you know, the, the, the development of their brain makes them more susceptible to damage and resultant um, epilepsy. Do babies have epilepsy? Yes, babies do have epilepsy. And some of them uh, do have it as early as the first week, the first few weeks of life. And usually those um, sorts of epilepsies, they, they can manifest as abnormal movements in these babies. Unfortunately, the thing about, about babies is that babies can be very, a very interesting bunch of people in the, <laughs> in the sense that a lot of things that they do are very strange to mothers. Like, is yeah. this normal? Is this not? So yeah. truth is, if in doubt and the baby is making any abnormal movement, yeah. please take to the hospital. But what I'd say is that if you see your baby having jerky movements very frequently, mm -hmm. not just the occasional jerky movement that 
that will come once in a while when they hear a noise. But yeah. persistent jerking movements or stretching of both limbs that is persistent, then I think that could indicate that that baby has epilepsy of some so sort. So when, when, they, when they do like this... <laughs> I wish people could see, like, when, I wish when, people could see what... Like <laughs> You know, and stay for some and time. Stay for some time like that. Mm, no, so so when they do that and stay like that for some time, because you know, guys, babies stretch a lot. They do that yeah. a lot. Yeah. But if if it happens, so usually if it happens and they happily continue with what they were doing, yeah. that's fine. But if a baby stretches, because usually after a stretching episode that is an epileptic event, mm -hmm. the baby usually becomes what we call floppy, oh. such that the baby will be unresponsive. So a baby that stretch, you know, a baby that does that, their normal stretching. By the time they finish stretching, you know, they are back to what yeah, they were doing yeah, before. Yeah. They are, yeah. but once it's an epileptic event, the likelihood is that that baby will become unresponsive, so that you tap, you carry, you lift, and the baby is simply not responding to you, eyes closed or staring blankly. So that usually will differentiate the irregular. I just want to stretch because I want to stretch from something that looks like epilepsy. I hear that sometimes they. They cry abnormally or something like that. Is is that also part of the signals of epilepsy? I I don't know. I'm just asking. Mm. Like once the baby just cries uncontrollably, not abnormally, and so, yeah. So the abnormal cry usually we talk about what we call a high peaked cry, and that is in association with certain types of disease conditions like what we call asphyxia. Now, asphyxia, in terms of causes of epilepsy, is a very common cause of epilepsy later in life. Asphyxia is a condition in which the fetus or the newborn young infant is deprived of oxygen such that the brain is deprived of oxygen for one reason or the other sometimes it's because during labor labor was prolonged or the oxygen supply to the child through the umbilical cord mm -hmm. was sort of cut off maybe during the labor process either there was a cord knot or the cord was really tightly tied around the neck or the placenta you know became removed from the um, wall of the womb so all these de oxygen deprivation can actually lead to brain damage that can cause the child to have what we call a high pitched cry and that high pitched cry you know is, is it comes with a lot of other things so for instance the child can have seizures in that newborn period i'm talking about a child that is barely a day old yeah. Yeah. So the fact that the child has seizures in the newborn period doesn't necessarily mean that they will go on to have epilepsy. That's what I was going to ask, like, can they outgrow it? Yes, so, so there are those, some of those epilepsy syndromes that can be outgrown. However, there are some that, quite frankly, it's a lifetime of treatment, unfortunately. Don't scare me. <laughs> what are those ones? Hmm. So um, we talk about epilepsy syndromes because epilepsy has some, when we talk about a syndrome, a syndrome is a condition that has very specific features such that if you see one, two, three things, you are sure that this is this particular condition and this is how we should treat and this is what is likely to happen to this individual. So for instance, there is an epilepsy syndrome that we call West syndrome. They call it infantile spasm. And in this type of seizure, they begin to have these um, epileptic attacks where their whole trunk falls forward, falls forward very suddenly, and you know they are almost hitting their heads on on the table. And it starts from around six months of age. Now, West syndrome is a very difficult epileptic syndrome to treat, and so you have to you know make use of drugs that are not you know usually readily available that might have significant side effects. And the children will begin to have things like mental retardation. So West syndrome is characterized by, also characterized by a specific looking type of um, what we call an electroencephalogram. An EEG, for everyone, is a test that we do where we, where we connect electrodes. Electrodes are simply devices that can pick up electrical signals okay. to the head of the individual. And then those electrical signals are traced on a paper, transduced, and then traced on a paper for us to see what the brain wave looks like. To tell us what part of the brain exactly the epilepsy is coming from and what the pattern looks like. And so that West syndrome has what we call a hips arrhythmia, which is a very disorganized electrical wave. And so such children actually don't do very well, you know, on, on the long run. Also, individuals who had issues at birth, so for instance, those individuals that had, you know, that low oxygen level, yeah. had meningitis, had a brain infection, there's a tendency that no matter how much you try, they might not really outgrow it because there is a focal and very specific damage to certain parts of the brain. Doctor, I, I, I have loads of questions, but I want us to engage with um, people the more because um, um, they, can, they can actually connect with you directly on their issues.
But before I open the phone lines, I have this one. I have two that I need to drop before we go to the phone lines. Okay. First is, let's let's say that the baby was born normal, like no epilepsy, no seizure whatsoever, no convulsion. At what state, at what age can a child start establishing exhibiting those symptoms those symptoms okay great question truth is majority of individuals who have epilepsy actually have not maybe not in this environment so in this environment so the the um, spectrum varies quite widely here in the developing world you find out that a lot of children that have epilepsy had issues in the newborn period oh. but for a lot of children as well you'll find out that they were perfectly fine at birth no issues and suddenly they just, they just develop epilepsy now that can happen at absolutely any age quite frankly so we don't usually like to put a cap on the age say oh this is the age when you are likely to have it no it, it can happen at absolutely any age so meaning that your index of suspicion has to be quite high you can just assume that oh because because this child isn't up to one year, it's unlikely that the child will have epilepsy. The child can have epilepsy as early as one year. As early as one year? Yes. Is there, is, is there a connection between the age of the mom and the child? Doctor, please hold on. Okay. I think we need to um, take a quick break. I'm hearing something here in my headphone. Let's see what is going on. Okay, I think that's stopped. So let's go on. Okay. Is there a connection between the age of the mother? Uh, and childbirth epilepsy or, or child epilepsy? No, fortunately there isn't. Uh, as far as I know, there hasn't been a very strong connection between the age of the mother and epilepsy. However, the age of the mother does come into play when it comes to certain genetic diseases like Down syndrome. So okay. the older the mother, especially mothers who are 35 years old and above, the likelihood that they will give birth to a child that has Down syndrome is significantly increased. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to epilepsy, you know, there hasn't no connection between the age of the mother and epilepsy has been established. Right away. Now, uh, now that I've exhausted th those two questions, I have a few more left. Let's go to the phone lines and hear uh, people who would like to ask you some specific questions regarding their situation. Um, 0700-993-993-993. That is our studio line. That's 0700-993-993-993. If you want to be anonymous, you're free to do that. We welcome that as well. Uh, for the female listener, the number to call is 01 7190. That is exclusive to the female callers. It's 01465 7190. And when you call, please go straight to the point. You don't have to tell me your name or where you're calling from. In fact, uh, the lady that you will hear her voice first, you don't have to tell her anything. Just tell her that you want to you know, connect to the studio and um, she will patch it through to the studio. We have our first anonymous caller. Good morning to you. Hello, good morning. I don't know, at what point can we say, okay, it's, uh, what's the topic we're talking about now? Uh, it's, uh, epilepsy. Epilepsy. Epilepsy, okay. yeah. But the seizure, you know, like, happens for 10, 15 seconds. what the doctor has said. Yes, go on. I actually had a child with um, who had CP, cerebral palsy, back then, you know. So all the symptoms, like uh, we had low oxygen when we gave birth in beta sepsia and all that, you know, transmission of blood, you know. You know at the end of the day, it you know, the check-in. Just came once, you know. Then frequently, said, so, so we not we noticed he wasn't staring, and he was he would just stare, he would just be looking, you know. He and then nothing. He wasn't smiling again. Nothing, mm -hmm. you know. When we took him to the hospital, the, the actors to go and do 
um, EEG e- e- and all that. So that was how it was diagnosed. I had a cerebral palsy. We started with the maintenance, you know, physiotherapy to help him with the hands and legs. But at the end of the day, at age almost seven, he gave up the ghost. So I just want to thank God, and uh, mm-hmm. it was it was quite a lovely experience that God, you know, because things you see things you don't you can you can't mm-hmm. explain you can't. You won't. You can't tell why, but it was just. Um, we are just grateful to God for giving mm. us the opportunity to take care of Him while mm. He was here. So that was mm. just my. That's this just my little contribution. Thank you. Have to give this Thank you. Thank you. We, we appreciate. We appreciate your thought, Doctor. Mm. Oh, I mean, I mean, the second caller, thank you so much for sharing that with us. I mean, this is the story of a lot of families here in, um, you know, this part of the world where they give birth to babies and the babies have um, cerebral palsy. By the way, everyone, cerebral palsy is a disorder of movement and posture that results from a, from damage to the brain while it is still developing. And this can happen even when the baby is still in the womb. For a lot of people, they actually don't know exactly what the cause of the cerebral palsy or the cause of that brain damage is. But again, you know, environment for a lot of other people things like that asphyxia i spoke about whereby the brain is deprived of oxygen in the first few days of life can actually result in that brain damage um i'm I'm really sorry to hear that but yes i mean very very thankful that you know you have taken that experience as the opportunity to have cared for another soul and the dignity that you give the human soul you know is what really really matters you know so thank you very much for that and the first call i also mentioned that the child has cerebral palsy that's right and cerebral palsy, meaning that it, it, it is very common, a, a, a common condition as far as you know, childhood conditions go. And what are common causes of cerebral palsy include things like asphyxia, jaundice, neonatal jaundice in the newborn period. So we don't joke around when we say a child that has jaundice because right. this is a brain that the child hopefully should use for the next 70 years. Mm-hmm. But if mm-hmm. a damage occurs, then the functionality of that brain is cut short you know, significantly, such that it's not a quality brain that's going to be used if the child manages to survive beyond 30, you know, meaning that um, he mentioned that the child, his child has a tendency to have, you know, seizures. If a person has more than two seizures that are not associated with fever, the person is said to be had to have epilepsy. So regardless, if a person has a seizure now when he is one year old, and the next seizure that he doesn't have a fever, and the next seizure that he has is when he is eight years old, it is concluded that he has epilepsy. Now, what type of epilepsy is ha- he has, what is causing it, is what we will now have to you know, determine. So that child that he mentioned that has cerebral palsy and has been having frequent seizures, yes, the child has epilepsy. And epilepsy is one of the issues that children with cerebral palsy have, amongst a lot of other things, including difficulty with breathing, difficulty with swallowing, swallowing rather than feeding, you know, difficulty with movement and posture. So, right. yeah. Let's jump on another call before we go out for a first, first break. Good morning to you. Hello. Hello, good morning. Can you turn off your radio? Hello. Okay. Yes, Hello, good morning. Good morning to you. Let's talk. I have a son that uh, developed a seizure at the age of seven. And uh, he was to various hospitals when he started in Tegritol. He's 15 now. He's still on Tegritol. I want to know if there's a chance that he may stop this medication and um, return to normal at some point in his life or if it's something that that he has to continue for the rest of his life. All right, madam. Thank you. Thank you for calling. Yes, please. Okay, so thank you very much for that question. Now, very important. Now, when it comes to the treatment of epilepsy, unfortunately, epilepsy does not have a cure. But epilepsy can be managed. There isn't any, there isn't such a thing as you know curable epilepsy, to to, to a large extent. Um, so she has asked you. I mean, her son has been on Tegritol, which is one of the. I mean, that's a brand name, but the, the drug is carbamazepine. Now, carbamazepine is one of the drugs that we actually use to treat epilepsy. So what happens is that we start a drug for a child who has an epilepsy, okay. and then we keep on giving the child the drug until the child has been two years free of seizures. And meaning that if you were given the drug today, and then in two years' time, the day before the child hits two years, the child has a seizure, we start counting again. Again. So the child has to be having seizure free for at least two years on the drug before we begin to consider tailing off. So of course the question I'd like to ask her is when last did he have a seizure? If he has had a seizure, you know, God forbid, yesterday, then the two years, I mean, we start counting the two years from that point when the child had the last seizure. 
that's one two is that seizures um in terms of when to stop the drug would depend on what is causing the seizures so if for instance there are some what we call focal lesions so for instance some people they have what well, you know some things that we call arteriovenous malformations mm -hmm. such that the veins and the arteries that are supposed to be quite separate yes doc we need to go on a quick no break. problem we'll continue with the doc's explanation of seizures in a moment Women are half the population, but don't hold half the political representation. Our Look at your Senate, that. your House of Reps, your It'll House of Assembly, your House of Reps, even your local government council. It just, just, kind just of trigger it off. Yeah. With women. It's time so, to we'll, translate we'll our from equal from population so, into equal okay, political that's right. power. And so, on March 7th, at the Glass Ceiling Convention, let's make a plan to get it. Brought to you by Nigeria Info, 99.3 FM. And the Glass Ceiling with Sandra Ezequisili. It's a fully online conference to celebrate International Women's Day. We'll be talking about practical steps women can take towards political power in Nigeria. How to take over parties, how to win primaries, how to win elections, how to protect our votes. Our guest speaker is Nse Ufot, founder of the New Georgia Project that helped flip the U.S. Senate. Our panelists include former member of the House of Representatives, Foundation, Family Law Odufua, co founder of Family Squad Coalition, said my brother started this person says my brother started having convulsion at the age of one hmm. he was six hmm. and he says doctor is there a possibility that it will start again if convulsion is a symptom of epilepsy hmm. okay great question yeah. and the truth matter is that with epilepsy convulsion is not the only manifestation there are some people that have what we call absence seizures where they just stay they will just stay for like 15 seconds yeah. and go back to what they were doing and you think Pay attention to me. You are just not having a convulsion. Yeah, it's seizure. Having a seizure. Okay. Okay. It's messing sometimes. Eh? <laughs> oh yes, Lagos State Health Management Agency Lashma has designed an affordable and quality healthcare scheme for Lagos residents in Lera Eco. At your convenience, you can have access to antenatal, delivery, immunization, management of hypertension, diabetes, and other illnesses, family planning, and basic emergencies. Register with Ilera Eco branded agents and at the nearest Ilera Eco branded outlets. Pay 40,000 naira annual subscription for a family package or 8,500 naira for an individual package and start to experience peace of mind. For more information, call 0700 Ilera Eco or 0800 Ask Lashma or visit www.lashma.com. Ilera Eco, affordable and quality healthcare for Lagos residents. Someone said you are his um, teacher in Medilab. Oh. He said lost touch with him. His name is Dr. Mecca Vicky. Are you serious? Yeah. He said if he gave, he gave his number, that I should give it to you. Interesting. Yes, I'll, I'll call him. I thought, I thought the whole bunch was in, like, the whole bunch was there. <laughs> I hope he's behaving himself. <laughs> <laughs> he calls you Prof. Prof. Renner. <laughs> oh, I hope he's not referring to my dad, but my dad is also a pediatrician. Uh, and, and we both talk to them. So, yeah. uh, your advantage. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 
persistent. I mean, there are a lot of them out there. They're very persistent. No matter how you say, I am married, oh, don't worry, I'm good. I don't want to don't do this. I'm fine. They are dead. The one that will always be that come around and touch you. Oh, well, teaching children self-defense skills appears to be like a necessary thing for their day-to-day -day living. Because you never know. You read the street that's what I need. Give me some pat, pat, You can't be doing nothing. Bring you all around. Cash to dynamic duo of Collins Teke and Andrea Odobi Teke every weekday, 10 to 12 noon. On your normal Someone said, Dr. Okay, Adele, is seizure the same as Judy? Can epilepsy and Down syndrome be cured? Okay, 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 I think you've answered that. Uh, I think she sent that on Twitter as well. Uh, okay, I'm reading from Twitter. Oh, from Twitter. Okay, great. I'm reading from Twitter. And we're reaching you live from Etimi and Crescent, Victoria Island, Lagos, Nigeria. I'm Sheriff Quadri. Good morning to you. If you're watching on Facebook, Call it six lines in two, uh, or send us your thoughts via our live stream on Facebook and on YouTube. Uh, Nigeria Info 99.3 is how you can join us on those two platforms. We'll take your questions across all the platforms. If you are calling, if you don't want to mention your name, you're very free to do that. We welcome that. Uh, you can see. And does um, epilepsy management has a time management? I know someone who treated epilepsy for like three years and then she was satisfied, okay, they took her off carbamazepine. And, and after two, three years, she fell into mental illness and they said she had bipolar. Is it something connected? Can okay. on duty which is to make the human animal functional now we don't as yet understand fully these interconnections so it is not unusual to find the person who has epilepsy also have mental illness by way of schizophrenia or by way of depressive
activity that have a genetic basis such no that way. yes there is yes, there such that if a parent hmm, has epilepsy there are some syndromes whereby there is a child that is likely to also have epilepsy so there are some genetic components of epilepsy which is why as we we're discussing during the break that in some families yeah. you know before a person gets married to somebody they would have sent spies to go and investigate in the other family say come what diseases does this family have or do they have convulsion do they have epilepsy in their family let me, let me not go and marry the one that i cannot handle mm -hmm. and then because at the end of the day the children that they will give birth to might also end up having that, you know, conditions. Because some of this, so there is wisdom in some of the things that some of us you do know, in, you know. in these things, yes. So, I'm a, okay, let me not cheat my, because I was going to ask another one. Let's go back to the telephone. Good morning to you. Good morning. Yes, morning. Good morning. My name is um, John. Welcome, John. I want to find out, is there a permanent cure for epilepsy? Because I found out that um, there is an epilepsy center that they can undergo some surgery to remove causes of epilepsy in the brain. Is mm. it possible? This center you found out, is it in Nigeria here? It's, or? Not, in, it's not in Nigeria. Okay. It's not in Nigeria. that are amenable or that are, you know that will respond to surgery now the ones that respond to surgery are caused by very very specific causes so if you see for instance a tiny tumor in the brain yeah. or there's an arteriovenous malformation meaning that the blood Good morning. Hello, good morning. Yes, good morning to you. Yes, uh, I want to remain anonymous. That's fine. That's fine. I'm actually driving, okay, so, but um, I just want to say, I mean, thank you for this um, program and the opportunity for, I mean, a lot of people to also get um, educated.
a lot of young couples are actually suffering from this. I remember one of the um, visitations that we had in, in youth at some point. Right. At that point, like, there were only about two professors of neurosurgery. I mean, you can imagine at that level yeah. what we have to go through. Yeah. You know, but at the end of the day, there was still nothing they could do about it. <laughs> you know, my parents, I mean, I got there, I couldn't help it, I just started sharing it. Oh. If you see the kind of problems that a lot of people were even going through at that time, I mean, I have to just take my, I told my wife at some point, let's just take our son home, and we'll, we'll speak another, we'll, we'll speak, we'll speak another opinion somewhere else. So, I mean, I, I really do appreciate you sharing, and um, let's continue to have the conversations like this. Yes, we will. Especially we will. Young, young couples. Yes, we will. Thank you. Thank you so much for um, calling me. Appreciate it. I, I want to, Dr. Arena, let mm -hmm. me ask you this question mm -hmm. very quickly. Um, Growing up, mm. when we see anybody with seizure or convulsing and the spit is coming out from the person's mouth, we say, oh, don't touch him, oh, don't touch mm. him. If that thing touches you, you'll catch it. <laughs> is, is it, is it, is it contagious? Mm, it is not a coronavirus. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's not contagious. So, but I think this is, and somebody alluded to it, I think this might be some sort of spiritual connotation to it. So if somebody had, you know, for instance, placed a, you know, shop on, you know, for, for people that don't understand that, what that is, if they place some sort of a jazz <laughs> on the person, and then you two, with your big head, you go and touch the person that they put jazz on, how has it really, <laughs> they're just asking for it, they're asking for trouble, you know, but you no, know, if you touch a person that's having a convulsion, you won't have a convulsion. But I do feel very, very, you know, strongly about what the last caller said. Right. The truth of the matter is that epilepsy can be very difficult to um, treat. And these drugs are very tasking. And what we tell them is that you must take the drug at the exact same time every single day, morning and night, without fail, without missing it. And the drug must not run out before you come for a refill. Mm -hmm. And if we have given you a certain drug and we have maxed out the dose of that drug such that we have reached the maximum dose a child can be using for that particular drug, then we try to add on another drug. If that doesn't work, we try to change the drug altogether. And sometimes, you know, it gets frustrating for everyone involved, especially if these convulsions are not being adequately controlled. He mentioned trado medical, you know, going the traditional way. Now, the truth of the matter is that artemisinin, which we used to treat malaria these days, was actually obtained from the back of a plant. And it was just like, it was put through rigorous scientific process and it was found out that this actually treats malaria. So the traditional medicines have their use and their value. It's just that it just needs to be put through the crucible of, you know, scientific um, inquiry to make sure that what we are doing for patients is Safe. Indeed. Now, um, okay, so I have so many calls here, but let me just, I'm sorry, I have to ask my question first. Um, so, I have this other one here, um, Dr. Reina, and it's, it's quite interesting. Um, let me put it this way for you. So, when people are, con are convulsing, it's very normal mm. that the first thing they want to do is to shook something, shook it, shook it inside the person's mouth. <laughs> no. How do you, how do you care for Someone okay, so great question. I'm glad we came to that. A person who is convulsing is very vulnerable, and so the what you want to let me let me so let me say the do's first. So the first do is that please um, make sure that you stay calm, loosen all tight clothing on the individual, lie the individual on their left side and um, stay with the individual. You know, shout for help, shout for help. Don't leave the individual until the convulsion has actually stopped because they can actually stop breathing at any point in time, which of course brings me to the point of you know knowing basic CPR, which is something that everybody needs to know. So if you haven't watched a CPR, basic CPR um, video, please go to YouTube and you know just watch it. So try not to leave the individual. Once the seizure stops, look, shout for help, call for help. Those are the do's. Now, the don'ts, please don't shove your finger or a spoon into the individual's mouth or into the child's mouth. You can get your finger bitten off or you can fracture a tooth that can actually go into the airway and, you know, cause choking for the child. Please don't stick the foot of the child into fire. Don't pour hot water or any kind of liquid into the mouth of the child. Not cow's urine, not the urine of an old woman, not crude oil, not the snake oil, not anything. Don't pour onions into the child's eyes. These are things that I have personally witnessed or heard. And suddenly the neighbors are 
appear and then all these uh, how does somebody get urine from your cow why do people even keep your cow's urine but it appears out of nowhere you know you'd be surprised it appears out of nowhere and that's what people actually use to try to stop those convulsions and those things might actually worsen the situation and so those are the things that should not be done now most seizures will stop within five minutes of starting i know that once a seizure starts the idea of keep, keeping time completely goes out of the window because it's so alarming but most seizures will stop within five minutes of starting if a seizure lasts for more than five minutes then that's um, an indication for you to actually take the child gently to the nearest hospital please don't take the child to the hospital that is that small way when you are staying in so really because they, that's where they did the circumcision for the child yeah. take to the nearest hospital for stabilization nearest, nearest. The, closest. the closest which is why when you move into a new place please look for the hospital that is closest to you that's right. for emergency that's right. purposes that's right. When they stabilize the person, then you can now want start talking about oh my HMO is in your father, I'm away your father, yeah. and then you can now go there. But for emergency issues, please do for the hospital that's nearest to you. Take the child there; they will stabilize, and then you can move to where they can chat and get definitive care. Interesting. I'm gonna to go to WhatsApp now. Let's uh, quickly switch to WhatsApp uh, and get um, some contributions from WhatsApp. Let's take this one here. Um, no name. The person says. My brother started having convulsion at the age of one. Till he was six. Doctor, is there a possibility that it will start again? Is convulsion a symptom of epilepsy? Mm, okay, so the main symptom of epilepsy actually is repeated convulsion. So yes, convulsions are a feature of epilepsy. Okay. Now, will he have the seizures again? It's hard to tell unless I bring out my cal calories and throw down here on this table and say, hey, 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 <laughs> and say my incantation. But he, he, the truth of the matter is that if a person becomes seizure free, there is still the risk that they can have a seizure again at any time. Oh. Yes, sometimes in, the, the seizure might happen again in adulthood. You know, but the fact that the person has become seizure free doesn't mean it cannot happen again. But a lot of children outgrow these things such that you know they're having it quite frequently and right. suddenly you know you just find out that it just stops which brings me to the point of you know that the um young co the man that is a, you know he mentioned that he's a young couple you know is in a young marriage was making that the seizure stopped after he started the travel medical means of treatment sometimes the seizures they were going to stop by themselves anyway mm. so how do you know it was the drug or how do you know it was, it was just going to stop by right. itself you know is there a risk of brain damage when someone comes Yes, there is. So we, we call that status epilepticus. Now, status epilepticus is a condition in which the seizure lasts for more than five minutes. That's not to say that if a seizure lasts for more than five minutes, there's definitely going to be brain damage. What we just say is that if a seizure has lasted for more than five minutes, the likelihood that it will stop by itself without an administration of a drug is very slim. So by the time a seizure starts to get into 20 minutes, 30 minutes, oh. Oxygen to the brain is actually being deprived, and so the person can actually suffer significant brain damage from which the person might actually not recover. Wow. Yes. That's horrible. I have a comment here on WhatsApp. The person says, I have a daughter that has uh, this problem. She's been on it since 2011. To date, she's 17 years now, and their mom is late since 2009. Is there a way out? Because I have tried all my efforts, yet no result. How can I reach you, please? Uh, would we'll, we'll, um, give out your social media handle uh, hmm. before we go on the show. So, uh, if you're wondering how you can reach um, Dr. Reina, um, don't worry. He will give us social media handle and any other thing that he can give us. Hmm. Um, so, um, you can reach out to him personally. I would have offered to be passing messages across, but uh, you know, no, Dr. This one is your job. Kenneth from Ibarra from Lecky says, um, Doctor in the house, traditionally epilepsy can be cured. My younger uh, brother had my younger hmm. had epilepsy and he was cured traditionally in the eighties. Orthodox doctors through the Nigerian Medical Association hmm. should I have interface with traditional um healers. Uh, so what he's saying is is there is there a possibility hmm. for um Orthodox medicine to collaborate with um, traditional medicine. It's not just uh, mm. it, when, not, when we talk about epilepsy, yeah. in some other areas. Mm. Is that something mm. that we, we can begin to look into? The, the, the curious thing about this is that I had actually once said during my medical school days that <clears throat> I believe that, that, that health and health seeking comes in all shapes, forms, and sizes. As this, health seeking is as diverse as we are as human beings. Mm. And the fact is, people will seek, seek for health remedies anywhere they feel they can find it and so i felt that as medical students we should have been exposed to traditional this was my opinion but of course yeah. i didn't express it yeah. rather openly but we should have been exposed to the tradition I, i've always wanted to go to a herbalist and say okay you know what 
tell me everything you know. I'm very open-minded like that. To just say, so, so what, this, what is this for? How much do you give for this? So I believe that it will be a nice thing for us to interface with them and say, okay, what are the active ingredients? What are the active components in this particular drug? And how did you discover that this particular plant can do this job? Can do this job you know, and you know, for how long have you been doing this? Are there any incantations you need to say for this to work? You know, so things like that, just, just, just to know. So I am not going to discountenance the fact that you could have used a traditional traditional medical drug right. and it actually worked right. because I don't have the evidence to say it didn't. You are the one that has the evidence. Mm -hmm. But then again, the burden of proof is on, you know, you to say that this is work, this is this is how it works, this is why it works and you know and, and things like that. So we as the orthodox medical people, I think it would be nice for us to borrow a leaf if truly these things are working. It could be revolutionary if we could find a plant in Nigeria here yeah, that could actually cure, you know, you know some forms of epilepsy. It's a revolution or even cancer. Who knows? Who knows? We might have something that might go cancer. It might revolutionize medicine as we know it, but until that is presented to us in a way that the scientific community can actually you know, look through, it will remain just oral tradition. Okay. Let's get back to the telephone. Hello, good morning to you. Hello, good morning. Good morning to you. I've had all the doctor have said. So going to the native doctor or the tribe, tribe and look at the, what you call them. Once I know they go with three people or the spirituality, the spirit will tell them what to do. Hmm. And sometimes the spirit works on the patient. Hmm. Okay, let's leave you like that. Thank you for calling me. Nigeria, for good morning to you. Good morning, Sherry. Good morning, good morning to, you. to your guest. Yes, good morning. morning. Um, just said before yesterday in my neighborhood, a 10 year old child has been in a slum. We're all wondering, never knowing is this thing we're talking about here. Mm. And everybody gathered. And suddenly, a woman just ran and sprayed water on him and the car raised him up and sat him down before the mom came. So I would want to pick your uh, contact or information to pass on to this woman, possibly to do something about this, because it's been reoccurring. Mm. You know, it's in my neighborhood. Mm. All right, all right. Thank you. Thank you, very much. Thank you too. Doc, let me come to you with this question. Uh, treatment of epilepsy, mm. especially for children. <clears throat> How expensive is this? Hmm. Treatment of epilepsy is expensive. I would say that for a month's dose, so usually we administer medication to children based on their weight. And so the heavier a child is, the larger doses of medications we will need to administer to achieve maximal um, control. So I would say that for most of the common anti-epileptic drugs that we use, uh, a family might spend up to between 20000 and 40000 a month to treat. And if you think about 20000 I mean, what's the minimum wage? If you think about 20000 to 40000 a month for a year, so that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. And these are some of the more readily available, more of the, you know, relatively middle to low to middle costs medications. If you now have to use very soft specialist medications, you know, uh, like leveteracetam, you know, some of these other things that are pretty um, expensive and pretty high high tech, then you might be talking about significantly larger sums. So it is expensive. And, and, and of course, this involves also follow-up, you know, because they're coming to the clinics. You, you don't just, you know, start medications and then just let them go. Medications have side effects like liver damage. Some of these drugs might actually even, on occasion, worsen the epilepsy. So you need to monitor and follow them up. And so sometimes, depending on how bad the seizures are, we might see them as frequently as every month. Sometimes you can see them as infrequently as once in six months, depending on how good their epileptic control is. And, and, the, and this is time taking off work, time taking off school. Yeah, so. Uh, Doc, we must go now, but how can people reach out to you? If they've got further questions. Okay. I can imagine. So um so please follow me on Instagram at the noisy niger pediatrician. So once you just put the noisy, usually I I pop up because I mean the, the, it doesn't get yes, noisier than one very funny guy. <laughs> <laughs> the, so the noisy niger pediatrician on Instagram and on Twitter is at the noisy niger p one. 
So you can just send me a DM to ask me questions or comment on any of my posts. So comment under this post and I'll ask answer your questions. All right, Dr. Adili Reina, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you, Sherry, for having me. Well, I need to bring you back here uh, because there are other issues that we need to talk about medically. <laughs> huh? Thank, thank you so you. much. It's, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much. All right, Lagos, that's where